There has been this new feeling to the air lately. Especially in the mornings. It's cold and crisp and clear. And so is the feeling I get in my body. It's like the winter is waving at me from some time in the future. The morning air and that fresh smell of it always is the first sign of autumn to me. And I like the way it makes me feel more focused and calmer in a way. A beginning and an end at the same time. A duality I try to embrace as best as I can, even though it makes me a little bit confused Because as soon as the morning hours have passed, there might suddenly be a very warm and sunny day ahead, and I move back into my summer rhythm. But then the evening comes, and it's dark, and no more bright nights. And the things that have been hidden in the light of summer, or kept away by the heat, are now coming back again. There hasn't been this much rain all of summer. It's so wild. Because I'm so happy for the plants and for the river that it will start filling up again. And it started raining like in the middle of the night. And there's been this thunder as well. And we woke up from the first like real thunder because it almost shook like the house shook, like the bed was shaking from that thunder. It was so loud. <laughs> and so it's just been like this all morning. <laughs> hey. Not so happy about the rain, are you? When Bendik finally came home, we had decided to take some time off together. But that didn't necessarily mean slacking. We had a lot of projects around the garden that we wanted to get to, and it was really nice to finally have the time to do them. One of the projects was building these boxes for the garden. Luckily, the people that own this farm have some leftover planks from when they tore down their barn that we were able to use. Det er jo ingenting jeg kan gjøre, hva er viktig som at vi gjør det sånn? Det er en masse du kan gjøre. 
Generally, Bendik and I enjoy doing things together. But there's always this one problem that we encounter, which is that I am quite impatient. I enjoy effectiveness and I have this need to get some things done fast. While Bendik is more of a perfectionist and it doesn't necessarily mind taking some extra time to make things perfect. So, <laughs> this is Bendix, <laughs> this is mine. <laughs> And you can really see like the difference in um, detail here. This is my impatience and this is Bendik's patience coming through. But I actually made mine like in half the time that he did. So that's the only positive thing. <laughs> it works. It's only for the garden anyways. For now these garden beds only have some small shoots in them, but we hope that next spring it will become big and beautiful flowers. It's the time for harvest now, both to the farmers and to foragers like myself. I forage from nature all throughout the year, but this time is definitely the most busy time. And it's also kind of a fun time because it's the only season throughout the year that turns over half of Norway's population into foragers. And suddenly I am not alone in my treasure hunt. And the things that tempt us all out into the woods are, of course, mushrooms and berries. Bendik and I spent the day in the forest picking blueberries for ourselves and a full three evenings rinsing them off. But after that, our holiday season was up and it was time to get to work on preparing for our workshops this year, which also meant more foraging. Foraging a lot of this today because um, it's really good to use for coloring and also it's good to use for tea. When I forage for my workshops I often need to forage quite a lot because there is a lot of workshops and there's a lot of students. And also when you are coloring with something, you need to have an abundance of it. So that's why I'm foraging this because we have so much of it here, because this is an area where they have chopped down so much of the forest. And there's basically this and lingonberries that is growing here. So it's nice to forage the thing that you have an abundance of. Yeah, but this is really beautiful. I also try not to um, over pick from one area because it will be looking quite ugly afterwards and there's a lot of people walking here that really enjoy these flowers so 
preferably you would like it to look as if you haven't been there after you've picked something. And there's so many bees here. They really use this as the way to make honey in the late summers because then there aren't that many flowers left. Oh hi! <laughs> hi! You weren't supposed to forage blueberries right now. <laughs> what are you uh, shopping for with your shopping bag today? <laughs> Birch. Birch leaves. Fun. and it's not an edible plant. It's actually toxic but it's been used in medicine and we don't do that anymore and it's really good for coloring. It gives this yellow, lemon yellow color almost. There was another garden project that we had wanted to do for a long time which was to create a garden bed at the back of our house. Since we were touring all of spring we didn't have any time to do this then but we decided that autumn is as good a time as any and every evening after we finished work we went out to work on this. And this is a beautiful place because it has such a nice view of the mountains back here. But it's also a lot of shadow and not so much water coming down through the treetops. And because of that almost nothing is growing in this corner. And we wanted to see if we could do something about it. This project turned out to be way longer than we anticipated though because there were so many big stones and a lot of roots in the soil here. Creating a good place for things to grow is certainly hard work and I have the utmost respect for summertime, all farmers out there. But even though it was kind of hard, we also enjoyed it quite a lot and it was so nice to finally be able to have the time for this. And we really look forward to next summer when hopefully things are going to start growing here. For now we have planted a few things here that we think might enjoy this place and we will see what happens next year. It's an early morning and we are by the water trying to look for the beavers that I saw this summer because Bendik hasn't seen them that many times yet and not like up close but we think we might be a bit late 
beavers yet. Yeah. Let's give it some more time. Today there is a really big and important event happening in the town that we are kind of excited about and it's the yearly flea market that is happening just once a year in this school and it's such a big flea market with like a lot of cheap stuff. And when you live in like a town like this there aren't always that many opportunities to buy things because we have a few shops and they sell really good stuff and also we have a few thrift shops but still there are sometimes things that you really want to buy like outdoor furniture for example that can be a bit hard to come by and uh, we are going there now because Bendik thinks that we need to be there <laughs> before everyone else otherwise <laughs> everything will be gone so <laughs> Okay, he's saying that the best things will be gone. Are you stressed that we're gonna be late now? No. <laughs> Just hurry up! <laughs> yeah, you look a little bit stressed. <laughs> A lot of people thought the same thing as us, so there's a line. <laughs> There's always this issue with how we are going to transport things. Thank you. 